Hello, welcome to TLN Now. I'm Jerry Rose. Do Christians really have an opportunity to represent their values in Hollywood? Well, our guest today saw good production values in Hollywood on the one hand, but a terrible worldview on the other hand. Doug Phillips is the founder of the San Antonio Independent Christian Film Festival, uh, of which I've been to and was incredibly impressed. And Doug, it's good to have you on the program. Great today. to be here, Jerry. I, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, before we get to the whole film thing, one of the things, you, you just got back from Europe. Scotland, England, incredible, fabulous. What was Scotland like? I, I'm Scottish and I've never been to Scotland. You have to go. It's, it's God's country. Imagine 1,500 years of clearly evidenced history of the Church of Jesus Christ from the ancient island of Iona to the story of the Scottish Covenanters that gave their lives for the gospel. Every place was more wonderful and more beautiful than the past. We were with 100 Americans studying the Christian history of Scotland. Wow. Changed our lives. Well, in Inverness, Scotland, there yes. is a castle that's called Kilver Rock Castle. And it's the Rose family castle. Mm. And the Roses still live in the castle. Uh, Lady Elizabeth Rose still resides in the Rose family castle in Inverness, Scotland. And I've never had a chance to go, but we're looking forward to it. Inverness is beautiful. We visited there. My wife is a relative, actually a direct descendant of Robert the Bruce through adoption. She has a castle. She got to see her own castle, mm -hmm. one of the 800 Scottish castles. Yeah. Well, that's incredible. Why, why is history so important? I, I, I know you. I know you well enough to know that you feel that the past is very related to the present and the future. How so? Well, I'll say two things. First, in my personal opinion, there are only two subjects in the world, theology and history. Theology is the character, the attributes of God. History is his story. And everything, mathematics, every academic discipline, ultimately is part of how God has laid out the story in history and in the universe. Uh, one man once said that we are heirs to the past, we are ancestors to the future, we are part of an unfolding generational legacy. Without understanding where our fathers went before us, we can't understand who we are, we can't know where we're going, we live in the most historically illiterate generation in history, and that's a problem. Well, if what you say is true, we're in trouble. Because if you would ask the average university student, uh, I'm not talking about high school student, I'm talking about the average university student, questions about our history, mm. most of them would be remarkably ignorant. That's a problem. You know, the Bible says, honor your fathers and mothers. And I think our spiritual fathers, our historical fathers are part of that story. How can we live long in the land which God has given to us, which is what the fifth commandment says, if we don't know our fathers? And that means our history. It's a problem, and that's one of the reasons why liberals and humanists are targeting history to wipe it out, change it, transform it, uh, so the present generation doesn't understand what God has done historically in the life of this nation and the church. Well. That's the, other, that's the other part of the problem in that there are even uh, universities that uh, see the distortion of history as not that negative, that it could even be positive because if you distort history mm -hmm. to fit a particular theme, it makes people feel better about themselves. Yes. That, that sounds ridiculous, but nevertheless, that's true. And I'm sure, I'm sure you're aware of that. It's, a, it's really a Marxist worldview. It's an anti-Christian worldview. But if you think about it, the Bible's all about history how God created the world, the story of the history of the world from the fathers all the way down from Genesis to the coming of Christ. And the Bible commands us to stand strong in the faith, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, because of the cloud of witnesses that came before us. So how are we strong? We know our history. We know what God has done. We know the men and women that have fought before us. That's not new. I, I, I was reading Psalms the other, the other morning, and uh, it was interesting because in talking about history, it's kind of coincidental that, mm. that these thoughts came to me, but as I was reading Psalm, David kept reminding people mm. of their history. Yes. He yes. kept reminding them of what God had done and who he was in the past as well as in the present. Perhaps you're reading Psalm 78 or one of the many songs yeah. like that in which they say, Fathers, tell your children yeah. about the deeds of God with their fathers so that they will stand strong and not be like the Ephraimites who being armed with bows turned back in the day of battle because they didn't have hope, they didn't know God's story, they didn't know that God stands with His people. So the, the other part of this then uh, of, of what you do uh, is there is a strong emphasis on father-son relationships, yes. mother-daughter, father-daughter, yes. grandparents' responsibility, of bringing together the, the, the family and its history, who they are, our, our and ministry. mentoring yes. and development within the context of family. 
our ministry is family reformation. That's what we want to do is encourage the family. Every generation has its problems. Behind the problem it's always sin, but in our generation the attack on the family is really defining. Interestingly, you mentioned grandfathers. I think grandfathers are talked about more in the Bible than fathers are because oftentimes when the Scripture says, our father's fathers, what they really mean is the grandfathers and those that came beforehand. That's a whole message we need to address today because we're losing the impact of grandparents in the lives of their grandchildren. We're disposable grandparents today. So we want to address all of these different issues. And media is part of it because media affects the family. Well, so that brings me then to the point of how does the San Antonio International Christian Film Festival fit into all that? Well, the purpose of the San Antonio Independent Christian Film Festival is to help build a movement outside of Hollywood which is presuppositionally biblical. We want excellent films. We want films that are really, that really um, contemplate a distinctively biblical message from beginning to end. And we want this because we think the family needs it today. Uh, right now, Hollywood is toxic. They're poisoning our culture. The films coming out of Hollywood are basically toxic. Their methodologies are brilliant. I mean, they understand production values better than anyone else. That's something we as Christians need to understand. But as Christians, we've really just been eating the scraps off the table that the world has given to us. Our mission is to invest in the future, to educate the next generation of Christian filmmakers, to teach them the theological, historical foundations, and then the practical methodologies they need so they can be excellent filmmakers. It's interesting because there was a time, Doug, when the church didn't really look that favorably on the arts. Yes. Uh, any kind of art, the dramatic yes. arts, the communicative arts. Um, today we're getting back into them. Do you think that we, we sort of we gave up too much? Uh, I, I by, think so. By somehow not seeing those as spiritual and putting those off on a shelf someplace and saying, you know, these things are spiritual and those things are not. That's right. We've created a false dichotomy between the secular and the sacred, and I think that's a problem. Now, I'm sympathetic with those who say things are really bad, but the answer is not retreat. God is concerned about aesthetics. We know that because the Bible constantly deals with aesthetics. In fact, culture is religion externalized. It's the outworking of the true faith of the people. So when you look at the movie, the films, the family life of a culture, the question is, does it reflect priorities rooted in a love of God or a love of man? Well, you talk about worldview. Yes. Uh, let's talk about that for just a minute. What is worldview? A worldview is the grid by which we look at all of life. It's the paradigm for how we think about things. And everybody's got one. You've got one. I've got one. Our worldview may be consistent. It may be inconsistent. It may be biblical. It may be humanistic. But we all have a worldview. It conditions how we look at reality. Well, and, and with that then, uh, what comes out of Hollywood comes out because of a particular worldview. Absolutely correct. And the elites that govern Hollywood do not have a Christian worldview. Their worldview typically is at war with Christianity, which is why what comes out of them naturally reflects that worldview. But I know, and you know, that there, <coughs> there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of producers, there are a lot of Christians in Hollywood who really want to make that kind of a difference. Yes. And in some cases they're having that opportunity, but not in very many cases. It is, knowing from experience, mm -hmm. it is incredibly difficult Mm -hmm. to take anything that has a different worldview than what is ordained in a sense by Hollywood and getting that through the system. I, I think that's right. First of all, I thank God for every good thing that has ever happened because of courageous men going into difficult areas. The problem is that when we go into Hollywood we're normally operating on the terms of the other side. Yeah. We're normally serving them, we're working for them. Here's an experiment. Take a clean pig and throw it in a pile of mud? Does the mud get cleaner? Does the pig get dirty? <laughs> and more often than that, even our best men and women find themselves influenced more by Hollywood than in fact they are influencing Hollywood. There or are justify, exceptions. Or justifying compromise. That's right. There are exceptions. But I for one don't think that getting on a liberal sitcom and just changing the text a little bit is a colossal victory for the Kingdom of God. Uh, I was there